Psalms 119, <clears throat> verses 49 to 56. Zion, the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And this section is about the comfort of the word. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. There's a lot of hope. Throughout the Bible, based upon the Word of God. Noah would hope that one day the rain would come and his family would be secured and uh, the rain would be gone and his family would be back on the land. David is hoping for a king to be on his throne again. We are to hope in the blessed hope to come in our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's all, again, based upon God's word. Israel was hoping for, for the Messiah to come. He came, and they rejected him. This is my comfort in my affliction. When problems, pains, and suffering come, God has given you a comfort in his word that one to us, he writes in Corinthians, that he will not give, give us or put us on, under anything we cannot handle, and he'll give you a way to escape. And it is very unbearable that even in death, the Bible speaks, God's word, to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. I don't know. And there's a lot I don't know. I don't know how the lives of the people I've read about burning upon the stake, being put on the rack, Having their their belly cut open and their entrails coming out and fed to dogs and wild pigs. I don't know how a father can watch his children being abused and the freedom would be just to deny the God that saved him. But I do know it says, Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou shalt, which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my infliction. For thy word has quickened me, and quicken we know means to be made alive. Okay, there's one thing I do know. It had to be the word of God that kept them going through. And it had to be when they went to those faggots. And if you check your dictionary, it's, it's a piece of wood set afire. And when they went to those faggots to fire, they sang, some of them sang hymns. And I guarantee it's not the hymns that sung in the modern church today. I guarantee it was a hymn that was probably 95% scripture in it. There's the answer. It's the word. And based upon what I have just read, and if we do go through persecution, I don't know if God will have us do that or not. I, nothing tells me in the scripture. But the Bible says, Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. I do know for a surety if you have a modern Bible that is not the King James Bible, you're not going to go through the suffering. You're not going to go through the affliction because you do not have God's Word. You don't have the Word when it says in a, in a margin note or just outright omit Jesus
if they take away the word. Verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What would make somebody walk away from the burning or the or the, the affliction or the the rack? They don't have the word in them. I may not even have enough of the word in them. I'm lazy when it comes to, to comes to the Bible. I use a concordance. I use I use a computer to help me out. Pastor Roloff real, told us all in this era, if you put away the booby tube, you put away the movies, the dances, the booze, the drugs, you take away the worldly influence, you can take a bunch of nice girls saved under the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they can get up there and quote you an entire chapter. Of the Bible. Brother Lester Loaf told us that and lived it and showed it to us. Those girls were probably going through more affliction than what we go through. How much of the word do we have in our heart? How many Christians realize that when the rapture does happen, that the fact is the dead in Christ shall rise first, then after those that are alive? Well, the trumpet blows, and there is a, a space between those, those two periods. How many Christians have given up the faith and lost the crown? We don't know what that we don't know what that period is between the dead in Christ and those that are alive. But the dead in Christ rise and, and the period is there. Oh, I guess that's it. Lord ain't gonna come for me. I ain't saved. I don't. And then boom, you're caught up. You, you, you denied the Lord. You just didn't read your Bible. For thy word, thy word, not the modern word. Not Hort and Westcott word. Not the English word. Not the, 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 the American word. Thy word has quickened me, made you alive. And I'm not saying that, oh, if you put the word in your heart and it comes to persecution, you're not going to suffer pain. You will have pain. Satan will make sure you will. But you need the word. Every time, all three times that Satan attacked Jesus in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, Jesus came back with scripture. The proud, you know that's not a Christian. That's not to be you. That is nothing to be of God. The proud have may had yeah. the proud had the proud have had me greatly in derision, scorn, a laughing stock. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a street preacher. I've been in the prison preaching. You call me to your pulpit, I will preach. I will teach. I've had people tell who, who claim to be Christians thought me to be scorned and a laughing stock for what I do for the Lord Jesus Christ. I got bumper stickers all over my car from head to toe, from top to bottom. Well, not the bottom. I should do for the mechanic that ever works on it. And I, my car has been a laughing stock.
I guess they're proud. People who laugh at you when you do a street ministry or knock on doors, they're proud. And the Bible says, who is the king over all the children of pride? You read that chapter, and it's Satan. I'm putting scripture with scripture. You can claim to be a Christian, but if you laugh at me, and the Bible says you're proud. Yet have I not declined from thy law. They may laugh at you. We had a brother the other day speak up that he's he's been spitted upon. That hasn't happened to me. They get in your face. They taunt you. They get you with a mean, nasty word. I'm a Catholic. Like, whoa. I gotta go home. Worship Satan, yes, Satan. But the Bible says, "I will not depart from the law. I will not depart from the from the Word of God. I'm going to keep on going, no matter what they think, what they do." Comfort. What's the comfort here? The same thing that God, that Paul told you. Hey, listen to me. You want to be a Christian? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Get over it. It happened to Jesus. It's going to happen to you. If you do live godly, you don't live stupidly. The comfort is, you know what? I'm doing right. My years of being a street minister, preacher, knocking on doors, I can read the life of Jesus, I can read the life of the book of Acts, and I have gone through those things. And I go back to the Word. Oh, the whole world hates me. Oh, man. It, and I can read Elijah. Elijah says, I am one. And you know what? You know what God told Elijah? There are, five, there are what, 500 others that haven't kissed him. Baal. Get off your pity party. There's others like there who love me just like you do. Get off your butt and get going. That's a comfort. I remembered thy judgments of old. I remember what you've done in the stories of past, Lord. My sins, Lord, as bad as they are, as wicked as they are. Peter denied you three times, and I learned from that lesson that Peter repented three times and you forgave him. And he was able to move on. I know by thy judgments that you knocked Paul down to the ground. A man that persecuted the church. And you forgave him. And you loved him. And you picked him up and got him going. I remember by your judgments that a little baby had to die of David. But David had a contrite and a broken spirit and a heart. Even though there was a judgment of death there, you loved him. You picked him up and you moved him on. I know as I try to reach lost people, I know that when I read in the Bible of the old paths, that there over there, when I turn to the right, I always look to the right, I see that ark and there's an open door for the world to come in.
that I know that that door today is Jesus Christ and it's open for anybody to come on. I am still a vessel of God. And you know what? I may never see anybody go into that ark. But I know my family did. I have known by the past and the judgments of old that Enoch walked with you and one day he was not. I will walk with you, Lord, and one day I will be not. See, that's why you read your Bible. That's why all those, those I know, I hate to say the word story because they're not story, the truth. That's why all the biographies of the, of the men of God are in here. So when you go through your life, you can match the life you're going through with that part of the Bible. And to know that one day if religion comes up and kills me, because I sacrificed the blood of the Lamb, I know that God will come down and say to religion, where is Abel? Well, I don't know where he is. Hark, I hear his blood crying from me. I know something that 99% of psychiatrists don't know or don't want to believe. I know where sin came from. I know where all problems came from. It came from Genesis chapter 3. And I know who redeemed me, and I know who's going to take me out of this mess. And I know one day that, hey, the faithful God from Genesis to Revelation said, I'm going to get a new body. I'm not going to have sorrow. I'm not going to have suffering. I'm not going to have shame. I'm not going to have tears. Why do I know those judgments of old? Because Jesus fulfilled 48 prophecies of, of his first advent. 100%. Based upon that 100% of the prophecies fulfilled in his first advent, which could not be fulfilled by any common man but God, I've got to trust in all the rest of them. And then man comes around with archaeology say, yes, there was a David. Yes, there was a, a Babylonian. Yes, it was conquered overnight. I, I got all those things that the Bible says is true and right. And that is the judgment of God to say, keep going, keep living for me. As I took care of Samson, I'll take care of you. That's a comfort. As carnal as Samson was, God still took care of him. I could become a carnal Christian, but my name is still in Hebrews 11. With the faithful. And how am I faithful? By Jesus Christ. That's the only way I'm faithful. O oh Lord, and have comforted myself. The Bible comfort you when you read. Here's this young lady. We don't even know her age. We don't know much about her. She is a widow in a foreign country. Tells her mother-in-law, hey, I'm going to go with you. Your God's going to be my God. And her name is in the line of the Jewish Messiah. I don't know who this lady, Goo Goo Gaga, whatever her name is. I'm sorry to say I grew up with Madonna. I don't know what any of these female whores that sell themselves out today in the media, television and all that. But I do know one thing. I have a comfort. 
I'm going to meet Ruth one day. I am going to meet Mary one day and Elizabeth and Sarah and Rebecca. I'm going to meet Habakkuk, Malachi, Peter, James, John. That's a comfort. It's a comfort to know the kind of character like I am, like Peter, always burning the mouth out. Yep, but the Lord loved him. And the Lord loves me. That's a comfort. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee is a comfort. When many, too many Christians have left. That's a comfort. Horror. Oh, comfort myself in horror. Huh? That sounds good. And have comfort myself. Horror. <laughs> Has taken hold upon me. Because of the wicked that forsake thy law. You know why you go you own the world and preach the gospel? Now let me change that. You know why you don't go in the world and preach the gospel? Because you don't know what the horror is that those lost people are going to get. Now I'll say 95% of chances your preacher of that pulpit don't preach the place they're going to and has air conditioned it and opened up the windows and brought in a dairy case and ice packs. It's probably a place that he's going according to is he 1 Corinthians 11 or 2 Corinthians 11 where it says that Satan has his ministers. When a man does not do the word of God, he burns in hell for eternity and is turned into the lake of fire. And guess what he does not get? Comfort. How do you like that? So we're supposedly down south. We're, we're, we're supposedly in the Bible Belt. And when you say southern comfort... What do you think of? Booze? Do you realize that a person that goes into hell will not have comfort? What one comfort could you think of? Never to have a pillow and close their eyes and take a nap. Never mind sleep. A nap. Never. You know what happens when you when you are without sleep for a week as I have been? My body's weird. It's it stores caffeine and then for about a week I can't sleep. It's the medical conditions doctors told me I have. You know, you're going out of your mind when you haven't slept for a week. You're going bound crazy. You'll do anything and try anything to go to sleep. You're up all night. You're up all day. It just, I can't imagine, in, in hell for eternity. And then never mind, no more pills to get rid of the pain. They won't have legalization of marijuana in hell. That stuff will go up in smoke so quick you wouldn't get a chance to take a whiff. Never mind in hell. There is no comfort in hell for the wicked. Thy statutes, God's statutes, have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage, a long journey. You know, there are some out there who don't think they're a pilgrimage. They think that this is their home. 
I gotta stand up and fight for America. Go ahead. America is not my home. I'm a pilgrim. Which means that this is not my home. My home is New Jerusalem. Some will sing the songs of America the Beautiful. The National Anthem. The Pledge of Allegiance. Take me out to the ball game. Those are their songs. My songs, Are You Saved by the Blood? Are You Washed in the Blood? My songs are about Jesus. My songs are about the Word, the B-I-B-L-E. As I'm on this pilgrimage, I am to remember that I'm on a pilgrimage. I am not a resident here. I may have a house, but when the rapture happens or when death happens, it ain't my house no more. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had. Because I kept thy precepts. The name of the Lord is to be remembered at night. Prayer. Thanking God. Again, it's all because of the word of the Lord. How many times have you read in the Bible at night? It mentions God. It mentions prayer. It mentions songs. I've stood upon my watch and, and remember the word. It was at night, and Peter comes. I mean, Jesus came walking on the sea. That means you are to have the word day and night. You're to remember the Lord day and night. We are in the night on God's, God's calendar. We're coming up to the morning watch. We're in the night, in the middle of the night. This is the time to have the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before the trumpet blows in the morning. Before reveille. Time to get all the troops up. Trying to get the army up. Well, you blow that horn. Muster all the troops. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 